what is scan protocol and what are its different key features let's try to figure out answers to these questions in our today's video hello everyone welcome to link frequency and i'm ashwarya patta this video is part of our course that is introduction to otasa so without any further delay let's get started CAN stands for Controller Area Network Protocol. It is a method of communication between the electronic devices that is embedded in a vehicle. A CAN is a message-oriented protocol that is designed especially for robust performance within a harsh environment. Every electronic device that communicates via CAN protocol is connected to one another via a common serial bus that allows the transfer of messages. Through a CAN bus, various microcontrollers and devices can have real-time communication without the need of host computer. Every electronic device that is present in the CAN network is known as node. Every node must have hardware and software embedded in them for a proper data exchange. In our previous video, we spoke about why do we need CAN protocol. Conventional point-to-point -point wiring system used in the vehicle for communication was becoming increasingly complex and heavy. especially as the number of electronic devices or components grew the wiring harness was becoming more difficult to manage and maintain the conventional method of communication is represented on the screen where you can see the connectivity between the ecus is done individually however can protocol provided a solution by allowing multiple ecus to communicate with each other over a shared bus hence reducing the amount of wiring requirements CAN protocol was basically designed to replace the conventional wiring method that is used in the automobile for communication between different ECUs. CAN nodes are connected by a two wire that is CAN high and CAN low twisted pair cables that is terminated with 120 ohm resistance at both the ends to avoid the reflection. The representation on the screen shows that 120 ohm resistance is connected at both the ends. CAN supports data rate of 1 Mbps at 40 meter bus length. and the message transmission is asynchronous in can there are two types of message formats that is standard format and extended format now let's look into them in detail the first one is standard format it is also known as 2.0a format the standard format identifier uses 11 bits it is widely used in most of the can implementations this format allows for up to 2 raised to 11 unique message identifiers Moving on the second type is extended format. It is also known as 2.0b format. The extended format identifier uses 29 bits, providing a larger address space for the message identifier. This format allows up to 2 raised to 29 unique message identifiers. The choice between standard format and extended format depends on the specific application requirements. In most of the cases the standard format is sufficient for CAN networks with limited number of nodes and well defined set of messages. The extended format is typically used when there is a requirement for larger address spaces for the unique message identifier such as complex systems that have larger number of nodes. The CAN protocol has found its widespread use in the automotive applications where it is used in engine control, transmission control, chassis control, diagnostics and many more. It is also employed in various industrial sectors for machine control, process automation, robotics and many other applications that require reliable and efficient communication between the ECUs. Well, it's time to look into our next question that is what are the key features of CAN protocol? The first key feature is message based communication. CAN uses a message based communication module where the data is transmitted in the form of discrete messages known as frames. Any node can broadcast message on CAN bus and all the other nodes can listen to this broadcasted message including the transmitter. But it's the receiver's choice to receive the message or not. That is, it's not a address based protocol which is used in peer to peer transmission. Moving on to our next key feature that is message prioritization. When more than one CAN device transmit a message simultaneously at the same time, the identifier is used as a priority to determine which device gains the access to the network. In short, we can say that the lower the number of the identifier, the higher is the priority. Moving on to our next key feature that is multi-master communication. Any node can act as a master and initiate communication with other node on the bus. without requiring the explicit permission or coordination from any other nodes 
This feature makes CAN more adaptive because there are many safety critical issues and the message from these safety critical issues need much more immediate action. The next key feature is error detection. CAN employs a robust error detection mechanism based on CRC that is nothing but cyclic redundancy check. Each transmitted frame includes a CRC value that enables the receiving ECU to detect and discard corrupted or invalid messages. This in turn enhances the data integrity and reliability. The next key feature is fault confinement. CAN incorporates fault confinement mechanism that isolates faulty nodes preventing network disruption. If a node malfunctions or experiences any kind of error, the rest of the network remains unaffected from this error. The next key feature is multicast. CAN supports both unicast and multicast communication. Messages can be addressed to specific ECU or broadcasted to all the other ECUs on the CAN network. Moving on to our next key feature that is CAN error handling. The CAN protocol includes mechanism for error detection, reporting and also the recovery. Error frames are generated when certain error conditions are detected, such as bit error, frame format error or CRC errors. Error counters are maintained to monitor the health of the CAN bus. Any specific error state like CAN bus off are triggered when the error thresholds are exceeded. The next key feature is arbitration. CAN employs a non-destructive bitwise arbitration mechanism to resolve conflicts when multiple issues attempt to transfer messages simultaneously. The arbitration process ensures that the message with the highest priority is transmitted while the lower priority messages are temporarily delayed. The next key feature is based on bit timing. CAN has precise timing requirement to ensure accurate data transmission. It defines parameters such as bitrate, sample points, and synchronization. These parameters are important since proper bit timing is crucial for reliable communication. Last but not the least, the last key feature is remote data request. Remote data request, that is nothing but RTR, allows a node to request data from another node on the bus without waiting for the other node to initiate communication. Instead of waiting for the other node to send the data, the requesting node can send a remote data request or RTR frame with a specific identifier. When the other node receives the request, it responds back with a data frame containing the requested data. So in this video, we learned about what exactly is CAN protocol and what are its different key features of the protocol. Thank you so much for watching our video content. If there are any queries related to the video content, you can surely comment down in the comment section. Until we meet on our next video, happy learning. Tune yourself to make a difference.